Welcome back everybody to another video on the scan time trading series. Sorry I've been away for so long but trading has been absolutely hectic at the centre and I've just got some free time now to sort of sneak away and get a couple of videos done for yourselves. In this week's video what we're going to be having a look at is Siemens timers inside a TIA portal but we're going to have a look at the other timers that are available mainly looking at the TOF, the timer off delay and the TP, the timer pulse and how they work and how they differ with the on delay timer now before we get started with the video don't forget to give the video a like and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more and new videos when i have the free time to do so right let's get into today's video so what i'm going to do here is i've got tia portal opened up at the moment i'm just going to create a new project so just go to new project and we're just going to call this uh we'll call this chris timers and let that uh, just be created. And on the left hand side over here, our new device. I've already covered this in previous videos, but it's always good to go over it again and make sure it sinks in. Open up our CPU and I'm gonna open up unspecified and make sure it's a version four that I've got over here. Say okay to that. I've already set up the ethernet and uh, the IP address. So we shouldn't have any issues on that touch wood. So what we'll do is we'll now just click on detect over here. It'll then open up our hardware detection window. It'll hunt out our PLC. We should find our PLC over here. And then what we'll do is we'll just select the CPU and then click on detect. And what it should do is then pull in our hardware from behind me into our laptop here as we are connected via ethernet. Right, so there's our PLC. And we'll open a program blocks and we'll jump inside of OB1. And as I mentioned, we're going to be having a look at the other timers, mainly the TOF and the TP. We're going to have a look at the TONR later on, not just yet. Just the TOF and TP is all we're going to focus on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up this right-hand sidebar. And in here, we should see our timer operations folder. And there is our blue timers, which are the block format style. Whereas these black style timers over here, these are more like the coil style timers, which is very reminiscent of GX developer programming, where we created the coils for the timers. Now, beforehand, we've looked at the TON before when we've looked at creating a brand new project inside of TIA Portal. We're going to have a look at the TOF and the TP. What we'll do is we'll have a look at how the TP works first of all. So I'm just going to put a normally open contact in here. And I'm going to assign this to M0.0, .0 just in M bit. And then what we'll do is we'll drag across our TP into our network one. It'll ask us for a data block. We'll just leave it as it is. I'm not going to change the name or anything. Say OK to that. And there's our TP inside of it. Looks very similar to our TON. If we just have a look at our TON over here, very similar. You've got your input, you've got your output, you've got your preset time, and you've got your elapsed time. The only difference is the name of the timer is TON, this one here, TP. They work slightly different as well. So our input is our M0.0. I'm going to give this the time 10 seconds. So I'm just going to type in there 10S, and we're going to put an output coil in here, and we'll just put in Q0.0. Save the project, and then what we'll now do is we'll download this to the PLC. Right, so what we'll do is we'll go to our monitor window over here. All right, so here is our TP timer. Now, if you remember what the TON timer does, the timer on delay, that waits for an enable signal to turn on. When it sees that signal turn on, it waits a period of time and then turns on an output. So it's great for things like valves and pumps where you turn on the valve, you wait a period of time to allow the valve to fully open and then turn on the pump to pump fluid through the valve and the pipes. So what does the TP do? Well, if we pay attention to this output coil over here, you can see that everything is currently off. The output is also currently off. If I right click our M0.0, go to modify and go to modify to one, your output turns on straight away. So your output is now ticking away and your timer is now running. After 10 seconds, the timer turns off and so does our output coil. 
So what can we use these things for? Well, when we're starting up a production line, we might have a siren, we might have a lamp that flashes. What we sometimes do is when the production line starts, we could sound the siren for 10 seconds to allow people to be aware that the process is starting. We might flash a warning lamp for 10 seconds to tell people that the process is starting. So if I wanted to do something like that, all I would do is just disconnect change this tag here to let's say our process run signal. So when the process is running, we're gonna trigger this TP timer over here. And we can then set this to our siren if we wanted. So when our process is running, the siren turns on for 10 seconds and then turns back off again. If I wanted to flash a warning lamp, on, off, on, off for 10 seconds, then what I could do is I could use clock memory inside of our CPU. I'm going to come up to clock memory at a later stage and we'll show you how to use clock memory and set that up inside the PLC. Very handy for when we want to turn things on and off, such as warning lamps. So that there is our TP timer. Let's save that. Let's download that now with the new tags so we can see it working again. And we'll show you a couple of things about this timer. Okay, so let's go to the goggles. So now... Let's just turn that tag off. So now when your process is off, your siren does nothing. When we turn the process on, your siren turns on and this timer begins to run. After 10 seconds, the siren then turns off and that there is just an audible warning for starting your process. There we go. Now, what happens if my process turns off before the 10 seconds is finished. So if I turn this on now, time begins to run, but if I turn this off now, you'll notice the timer still continues to run. So it'll actually finish that whole 10 second period. So this process run signal is only needed technically for one PLC scan, and then this timer pulse will then continue to run. If you remember back to step seven days, you had the timer pulse, you had the S underscore pulse timer, but we also had the S underscore PEXT timer. This is very similar to that underscore PEXT, the extended pulse timer, the pulse timer that only required the input signal being on for one PLC scan. That's what this pulse timer is here. Okay then, so let's go offline and let's change this to our TOF. So now we're using the TOF, let's save that and let's download that. We're just gonna leave the tags as it is for now. And let's have a look at how the TOF works. Right, so let's go to our goggles once again. Let's minimize that. Right, so how does the TOF work? Well, let's turn on the process. So the process is gonna to begin to run. And you'll notice the siren turns on straight away. The timer, however, doesn't run. Doesn't do anything, in fact. Just stays there. So how does this timer work? Well, when we turn off the process, that's when the timer begins to run. And you'll notice the siren is still on. It isn't turning off just yet. After 10 seconds, that's when the siren turns off. Now in this type of routine, we wouldn't necessarily be controlling a siren because you're not gonna want a siren to be on for the entirety of the process and stay on once the process is finished. What we could use these things for, however, is things like extraction units. So we do quite a bit of work at timber mills. We also have done work at GE Aviation where we're dealing with Skydrol, which is a fluid which is highly toxic. Now what we must ensure we do when we're cutting logs at a timber mill or cutting planks of wood or running a pressure test down a GE is to have an extraction fan running at all times whenever the process is running. That's just to ensure that there's no sawdust sitting in the air or no uh, hazardous fumes sitting in the air either. What we would do is we would continue running that extraction fan even when the process has been stopped. And we would run that extraction fan for maybe another 30 minutes to an hour, however long we feel 
necessary for that extraction farm to run. And that's just because when we're finished cutting up logs on the production line at a timber mill, and you stop that production line, yes, you stopped cutting up logs, but there's still a lot of sawdust in the air. What you don't want to do is just stop the extraction farm straight away and still have that sawdust fall into the ground and you're breathing that sawdust in. So what you might do is you might continue running that extraction fan for a period of time to ensure the area is clear. This is where the TOF comes into play. So this is no longer a siren, this would be our extraction fan or our extraction unit. So let's save that, let's download that. Say yes to that, say yes to that. And let's go to monitor mode. Now what we'll do is we'll run our process and you'll notice the extraction fan turns on. So our extraction fan is currently running. The process is currently running but the timer isn't doing anything just yet. When we turn off the process, the extraction fan continues to run for X period of time, however long we deem to fit. That there continues to run, and then after our set period of time, that's when the extraction fan turns off. That's how we could use the TOF timer, and that's what we could use the TOF timer for. Now, bear in mind, whenever we're controlling things like these sirens and extraction fans, we're just controlling it in the basic sense there. There's nothing too complex going on just yet. In a real program, there'd be a lot more code inside of there to control that extraction fan, turning it on and turning it off at certain points and interlocking it to certain um, equipment. Now, that's what's useful about using Siemens TIA port is it includes these other timers available to you. You don't have to use them. A lot of people tend to just stick with using the TOM because they know how that timer works and they can use that timer. But it's useful for when you need to control things like extraction fans or sirens in different sorts of ways that we can use these timers. However, in other PLCs, for example, Mitsubishi GX developer on the older PLCs, we only had one timer and that was our TON timer. The TON timer is probably the most popular timer in all PLCs, every PLC has them. If you go to Mitsubishi PLCs, however, they might not have the timer pulse, they might not have the TOF timer, depending upon the age of the PLC or what PLC you're working with. So how could we create the pulse timer with the on delay timer? How could we create the timer off delay with the on delay timer? Well that's a question I want you guys to think about and we're going to have a look at it later on in our next video. So if you want to learn more, you want to learn how we can use the TON to do these sorts of other timers that are available to us in Siemens, don't forget to click the like button and to click the subscribe button so you can stay up to date and you can watch that video in a couple of weeks time. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a good one.